Thank you very much, everyone, for your attention. And um, with those very powerful signals from Commissioner uh, Quinn and the very strong words of encouragement uh, for collaboration from Minister Foster, I think the scene is very well set for our forum and workshop here in Belfast for the next uh, day and a half. First of all, let me very warmly thank Invest Northern Ireland for their very positive uh, initiative in partnering uh, this event and enabling it to come to Belfast. Uh, Invest Northern Ireland is no newcomer to partner initiatives uh, across the border. Uh, they were a very significant partner in the ICOE Ocean Energy event in Dublin uh, in 2012, and Owen Sweeney, our colleague, would have been uh, very involved in that. But I also want to specifically mention uh, a few people from Invest Northern Ireland who deserve particular uh, accolades today. Chairman Mark Ennis, who will be with us tonight and speaking tomorrow, Alison Gowdy, David Bell, uh, and the lady who has been at the engine room of all of the preparations uh, for this event, Joanna Lagan. Uh, I think they all deserve a round of applause from you all. <laughs> Minister Foster uh, introduced the, the idea of collaboration and cooperation if you like, the idea of open innovation enabling big and small, uh, private and public, uh, national agency and funder and research performers to actually do more together than is possible for them to do on their own. And as we go through the program today and through the dialogues you will have, that will be very much be, I think, at the core of the opportunity that we have together. And as I th if I think, as a rugby lad, and I had the pleasure of being down in Australia for the last two tests this summer, uh, well organized by my immigrant son. But I, I was reminded of how strongly uh, the Welsh lads were saying they needed t 10 Welshmen on that team to be successful at the end. And as I look forward to the weekend and the next three weekends, when we will have visitors from the southern shores and a truly global scale of international rugby, it will be from the four proud provinces of Ireland that a jersey will be put on uh, and no division will be recognized and they will take on the best in the world together. And I think as an analogy for our efforts, uh, it's not too off the mark. Uh, we have a chance, uh, we have a need to play at a globally competitive level and to rise to that challenge together. Multinational corporations based on this island, SMEs based on this island, research institutes based on this island, funding agencies based on this island. Our markets are largely not on this island. Our competitors largely are not on this island. They're often within the multinational community based in other parts of the world. There is an awful lot in this that unites us in a common effort. And it's that common effort, that global competition, but that global market, I believe, which will be the driving force for where we go from here. It was in 1997, I believe, that I first made a visit to Harlan and Wolf. At that time, led by uh, the Fred Olson uh, group and locally managed by a wonderful gentleman called Per Nielsen, who was actually an inspiration in the idea of open innovation and the idea of new futures and thinking of new futures. And when you look around and see the efforts uh, in Northern Ireland in offshore renewable energy developments, uh, wind turbine, uh, tidal turbine developments, thinking of a new future from a proud industrial uh, engineering base exemplified by Harland and Wolf, but looking to an entirely new future together. There is, uh, I think, a great legacy to the work and vision of Fred Olson uh, and Per Nielsen at that time. I remember visiting Fred Olson a few years later in the context of shipping but him saying a very few wise words, and you tend to remember these words. He said, in Ireland, you have something we do not have in Norway. And I said, what is that? He said, we have fjords, but you have energy. You have ocean energy. The fjords take that energy away from us. You have it uniquely in the world. And it's great to see only 10 days ago in Dublin at an innovation uh, seminar, the Director General of Science Foundation Ireland, himself a son of Ulster, citing 
a unique selling point, a unique global competitive asset that Ireland, North and South, has in ocean energy, and how readily now accepted that is at the core of policy making North and South on this island. But it is not the only unique opportunity in global markets that we have and share, and some more of those will be elucidated as we go through our program. And in the Republic of Ireland, Smart Ocean has grown uh, from a concept idea over the last four years, and we have had many partners in the early stages, uh, partners who invested, partners who uh, researched. From the funding side, we had the EPA, we had Higher Education Authority and uh, the higher education institutions. We had Enterprise Ireland and IDA. We had Sustainable Energy Ireland. We had the Geological Survey of Ireland in mapping with the Marine Institute key areas of interest for ocean energy. And now recently we have seen SFI funding very significantly ocean energy developments in this space. We are looking also and want to warmly welcome our visitors here from Canada, from the US and across the European Union and the European Commission because there is many, and there are many opportunities for us together in this space. But I think particularly when we think of this island and its position in the Atlantic Ocean and the context of water and water being a global issue, uh, we will find many things to do together. In the workshop itself, uh, the organizers have been drilling into me to get across the three objectives that uh, the program has been built around. We are talking about globally traded products and services. We are in a context now, and the minister mentioned global recovery. We are seeing south of the border early shoots, screen shoots of recovery. We have gone through a very traumatic period, but we have kept with science and innovation investment. We have struggled through a very challenging time, and we are ready, primed, and eager to now take on the next phase and the next challenges and ready for that. Part of our work in this workshop will be to really get a dialogue going across the multinational community, the SME community, the higher education institutes and the funding agencies. And my guarantee to you is that on the public side, we are listening. We're trying to encourage a forum and an event where that dialogue, that interchange and that listening can happen and where we can work through and think through new ways of building on Ireland's marine technology sector to assess global markets, to review recent policy developments, and there have been many encouraging policy developments in the backdrop, and I will take a little time to illuminate those for you, and also to progress the opportunities of Northern Ireland and Ireland together uh, operating in this space. In the backdrop, and the policy space. You have heard from the Commissioner extremely encouraging words right on the money for the topic areas and the interests that Smart Ocean represents and the companies and the researchers are on these tables. I'm very confident that Horizon 2020 will be a much richer funding source for your interests and our interests than has been the seventh framework program or any framework program heretofore. The challenge will be for us to step up to the competitive field that will come in to play in that space. At a European level, at a national level, I've been in this game nearly 20 years, and I now see a greater connection and a sense of the penny dropping as to the significance of marine resources than has been heretofore. You have a president of the European Union who is from an Atlantic state. You have had an Irish presidency of the European Union which dedicated itself to ensuring that the Atlantic strategy under the integrated maritime policy was delivered and achieved during the Irish presidency window. You have seen blue growth and Horizon 2020 commit itself, as the commissioner has said, to supporting the ambitions of blue growth whilst protecting the marine environment and getting an understanding of that ocean resource. You have a Prime Minister in Ireland who has dedicated himself to the efficient operation and achievement of Ireland's maritime potential. 
has championed the preparation of an integrated plan in the first time in the history of the Irish Republic, has established a coordination group based in his Prime Minister's office to coordinate that follow through, has dedicated a senior cabinet minister to deliver on that, is measuring that progress, is holding the public sector to account to achieve the many objectives set out in that and will report on that next year for the first time after the first 18 months. This sets a backdrop where opportunities can happen. We are at a juncture with that type of policy background, with blue growth in Europe, with Horizon 2020 in Europe, with an integrated maritime plan in Ireland, with a maritime policy in the UK, with the renewal of ocean energy interests and licensing uh, in Northern Ireland and Scotland. When you look at our geo positioning in the North Atlantic, and you think of the North Atlantic as a uniting force, the Commissioner has mentioned that Europe, Canada and the US secured an agreement, signed it in Galway in May, to cooperate on transatlantic signs. Not in isolation of the global ocean system, but when you think of the three areas they looked at, ocean observing, seabed mapping, to underpin the ability to understand that ocean is changing, it is changing rapidly, but it is not changing in a manner we can predict. It's 70% of the planet's surface. It's almost 98% of the planet's water. It is the planetary reservoir of water. If it is changing rapidly, if we are experiencing and expecting the population growth on this planet that will happen in the next 20, 30 years, water is going to become an ever increasingly important topic. We have the ability to observe every surface inch of this planet from satellites, but we can only penetrate the top layers of the ocean through satellites. We need to have eyes, technology and instruments in real time in the oceans now. We need to start deploying today's technology, preparing tomorrow's technology, designing the new instruments, designing the new sensors, and having a commitment to follow through and deploy them in these oceans. Not just for the sake of us who are in this space, but for the planetary survival, for the feasibility of the business opportunities. We need to understand the forces, the predictive, and have a predictive capability of the forces where we want to deploy new industries, build new wind turbines, build new offshore renewable energies, have deeper water hydrocarbon extraction, understand bioresources, understand biotech potential, be in the deep ocean exploring these natural products chemistries for their health, pharmaceutical, medical devices applications. These are the areas we need to have a competence and an ability. Technology, your space, data, data integration, management of software, sensor design, sensors deployment, system design, the ability to have new eyes and ears in that ocean like there have never been, deployed with today's technology, prepared for tomorrow's technology, and an ability to provide this knowledge and service globally to a global issue. It's not a local issue, it's not a regional issue, it's not an island of Ireland issue. This is a global issue, water, water management the survival of the planet. This is where smart ocean has its marketplace. It is global, it is not local. Today and tomorrow, start planning, start preparing, start taking actions. And if I want anything out of us over the next day and a half, it is two or three concrete, implementable, practical steps we can say to governments in Northern Ireland, to governments in, our, in the south of Ireland, to the opportunity sphere in Europe, to the transatlantic opportunity sphere. And transatlantic is where we start. We will continue to grow. It's a global issue, but the Atlantic is part. It's a starting point. It's an area where we got political leaders in three key areas to agree the importance of doing it together. It needs to be done together to be effective. Now is the time. Now is the time. We have never had a better policy backdrop. There is not an excuse in terms of policy. We have never had a funding backdrop opportunity. There is not an excuse in terms of funding opportunities. The challenge is to turn that opportunity into reality. Practical ideas, how we can go forward and avail of what's possible now and what we can build for tomorrow. And I submit to you that each and every one of you has a responsibility to be part 
of that definition, of identifying those opportunities, and of seeking out that future. And I wish you very well. Thank you very much.